Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday morning, and it's the first day of September. We made it to September. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this year has been an interesting one. That's an understatement of the year. Um, we are in Luke's Gospel, as you may know if you've been following along. We're in the second chapter today. We're going to look at verses 36 to 40 today. And so we're going to take a little, a fairly small bite again today and talk about this. Um, here... We, we left off yesterday um, with Simeon and the, the uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus' parents, Mary, Joseph and Mary, had brought Jesus to the the temple for the rituals that the, the uh, that needed to be performed after the birth of a of a boy and and the the, uh, uh, the firstborn and all of those things and and Mary being unclean from the birth of a child. Um, so we have that going on. Uh, so they're at the temple and they met Simeon and we had Simeon's song yesterday. And um, both Simeon and the figure we're going to see today, Anna, make one and only one each uh, appearances in the scripture, and it's here in Luke. And um, an actual uh, Phineal, uh, the father of Anna, makes his one and only mention in scripture as well here. Um, but both Anna and Simeon are often described as, by commentators as of the group called the, the quiet in the land. Um, and these are faithful folks that are prayerful folks, that are obedient folks. Um, they're, 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 they're not causing trouble, not violent, not like the zealots that we see um, that were trying to throw off uh, the Roman occupation, but rather the quiet in the land. They, they strove for the same thing, but they were working that way through prayer and, and imploring God to, to, really, to uh, free them. And so these two members of the quiet in the land is what the commentators believe Anna and Simeon are uh, because they're both older and they're both prayerful. Um, here they recognize Jesus for who he and what he is. Uh, some of the some of the others that are more caught up in in action and and violence um, fail to to uh, identify uh, Jesus correctly. That's just an interesting point or an interesting aside. So um, with that, um, let's go ahead and jump into. Uh, we're again we're in Luke chapter two verses thirty six to forty is what we're talking about today. There was also a prophet or a prophetess. Uh, some translations say, there was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after their marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At the, that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. Okay, she has come up uh, right after Simeon, apparently, and uh, like, oh my gosh, you're right, Simeon. Um, now, Anna is an interesting figure, even though she's only you know, very briefly mentioned. Um, she uh, is said to be a daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. Now, Asher is one of the lost 12 or the 10 lost tribes. Well, apparently not totally lost. They were supposedly lost after the Assyrian um, encounter of when they were the exile when the Assyrians took the people out of the country. Um, so supposedly that was one of the 10 lost tribes. Well, here we go in Jesus' lifetime. Um, lo and behold, um, nearly eight centuries later, um, we have someone that's identified as of the tribe of Asher. So they must not be as lost as we thought. Um, that's that's just an aside. It's interesting, though. Um, she's identified as being of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after their marriage. Now, that normally they would have been, you know, women in that culture were married as teenagers. Um, so she was probably 14-ish, 15-ish um, when she got married. So seven years, she's in her very early 20s. Um, when she's widowed, and she remains, oh, she remains a widow. She does not remarry for whatever reason. There's no mention of a ch of children either, is there? Um, so we don't know. She probably could be childless. Um, 
it's we the, one of the first things you read about that, that that causes one to scratch your head and go, what in the world's going on? Is she's it said that she remains in the temple all the time. Um, well, apparently I, I was reading that that there were some apartments available, some 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 lodging available in the temple that could be provided to some people. And for whatever reason, apparently perhaps the the uh, the authorities. Um, took pity on, on Anna, and perhaps because of her great piety, because she was always there praying. Um, some speculate that she was there in the court of the women, teaching uh, scripture to the to the women. Um, we, that That's kind of a speculation, though, but not kind of it is, because it doesn't say that. Um, but it might explain how she's able to be there all the time. She's gotten some kind of uh, special treatment. Um, but at any rate, she is there. And also the, it says that she is a, then she as a widow to the age of 84. Some translate that as that she was a widow for 84 years, which would really being at the age of 84 and at that, that time in history is unbelievable for her to be closer to a hundred. Um, if she was 15 then seven, she would be over a hundred actually. Um, so that would be you know, miraculous. Um, the point I don't I, I don't think is that she is um, that that the age specific is the issue. The point is how faithful she is and how faithful she is for how long she's faithful. Okay, and uh, we talked about that a little bit with Simeon um, that that they he was faithful for a long time. He did not. It wasn't like it was. He just uh, expected God to be there like that and uh, to remain in that pace of faith and wait, waiting. The quiet in the land. So uh, that is the point of that, is, is, is the duration that she's willing to wait on God's time. Um, that, that God is faithful no matter what and no matter how long it takes, that God is in fact faithful. Um, and so she's there, and she's prayerful, and she's obedient, and uh, that's, that's I believe, the message there, um, and that she recognizes one of those that was duteous and faithful. She recognizes who Jesus is. Um, the last part, when they had finished everything required by the law, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth, and the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. And this is, you know, we have a, an, it, Luke actually has Jesus at 12. That's next, which is, the others don't have that. We go from birth to Jesus' ministry. Um, so here we, uh, Luke is the only one that kind of tries to fill in that gap at all. And he doesn't fill it in a tremendous amount. It, it's pretty, still a pretty gaping gap, as they might say. Um, but he does, uh, he does give us this indication that Jesus, even though he is fully God, is all about continuing to learn and to continue to gather wisdom here while he's in preparation for his ministry. Um, so that's a message to us that we need to be duteous and we need to to uh, to do our best in the time in the time of the quiet in the quiet of the land. We need to be preparing. We need to be storing up knowledge and, and all of that um, to be ready for when when the day of the Lord comes. When it will come, I don't know. Nobody knows. That's not the point. We're just supposed to be being faithful and duteous and, prepare and work towards preparation, as Anna did, um, in prayer and in study. And as Jesus is doing, he's storing up knowledge. He's getting stronger. One of the things I always mention, um, you know, we talk about Jesus being a carpenter, um, but it's probably not true. And back when we were in Jerusalem, that became pretty evident that it probably wasn't true. Um, wood is not a really plentiful object in that part of the world, um, they tend to work with stone. And even today, most all of the homes are, homes are stone or concrete. They don't build with wood. Um, and that's, they built with stone. And so Jesus is probably a stone worker. So um, I think Jesus probably, given the time he's in, he's probably not real, real tall. You know, that Zacchaeus song, you know, wee little man, they... That can be easily translated that Jesus is the wee little man. Um, so Jesus is probably a short little burly guy. Not, not the image you have of Jesus because he's been lifting all those stones. He's strong. He's he's a, he's not only strong in his mind, but he's strong physically. If the, I would I would presume uh, if he's working in his father's 
um, workhouse and, and working with stone and building homes and building synagogues. Who knows what all he's been building. Um, so at any rate, there we leave Jesus for a few years now as he, he's growing up a little more. And tomorrow we'll talk about him in the temple. Okay. Uh, with that, I'm going to let you go and have a wonderful day. Remember to stay studious and prepare. So sit down and do some some more reading of scripture today uh, besides what we've just done. All right. Have a blessed day. And of course, as always, be a blessing to someone today. We'll see you all later. Bye-bye.